Okay, so we will deal with uh, cystitis as the next uh, class of um, urinary tract infections. Okay, so I said earlier on that when you just hear cystitis, uh, people get confused and they start thinking it's something to do with a, a cyst or something. No, it's uh, an inflammation of the bladder. Okay, so this is bladder and then this is inflammation. Okay, so inflammation of the bladder because of the infection that we might be having. <clears throat> okay, so it is uh, basically the inflammation of uh, the bladder from any cause. We can have different kinds of causes, but uh, most often it's caused because of a secondary bacterial infection. Okay, so you'll have a bacterial infection there that will actually now cause all that uh, problem. So it's most common in women again than men, and I don't think I need to keep uh, emphasizing that point. We know why. Okay, anatomical problems, uh, okay, not problems, anatomical structures, the way they are, okay, and also how congested the pelvis of the woman is and how short the uh, urinary tract is. Uh, so causes uh, mostly bacterial as just like the other kind of infection. Uh, so E. coli causes almost 90% uh, of all cases. And then the other ones, we can have Krebicella, Streptococci, Chlamydia, Trachomatis, uh, pseudomonas, all those bacterial uh, organisms can also cause it. So the signs and symptoms um, with um, cystitis, and this is where I really need you to pay attention, is that you'll have pain, obviously. But again, this pain is a bit different. Now, if you remember the pain with uh, pyelonephritis, we are having flank pain. But with cystitis, the pain that you'll have is uh, you'll just be having a suprapubic pain. Okay, and uh, the reason is where is the bladder located? Because if this is your abdomen, <coughs> this is your abdomen, uh, then just around, just uh, below your novel region, you, you expect this area to be around your pelvis region. This is where your bladder is. So the pain you'll be having is a suprapubic pain. Okay, now that is one way that you can differentiate whether you're having a pyelonephritis or you're having a cystitis. Okay, so then also you'll be having a burning sensation on urination and also pain on urination, which is dysuria. The frequency will increase. You'll have more than once every three hours. Okay, the urgency will be there. Then you'll be feeling um, like you have not voided completely. Then you'll need to go to the loo again to try and void completely. Then even after that, you'll just, again, you'll not have voided completely. So that uh, the, the incomplete voiding feeling causes more and more frequency then we expect a cloudy urine because of infection okay so we have we can have um now because of the infection that we are having in the bladder now the urine settles in the bladder and then now it comes out with uh, a cloudiness of some sort because of the microorganisms that are there then we might have hematuria because that is blood in urine because of Sometimes the bladder now becomes so inflamed and this, the cells are destroyed to the point that we have some sort of bleeding, okay? Oh, then we might have um, low abdominal pain. So this is the pain that you're talking about, the low abdominal pain, which is super, super pubic, and then fever and chills. Because it's an infection, then we, we expect to start having um, a fever and chills. Then other systemic kind of problems we might have are like fatigue, nausea, and vomiting and uh, mostly like vomiting and the nausea you might feel, it's also because of the buildup of waste products. Because now once you start having cystitis, we don't expect now uh, your urinary tract to work very efficiently. So we might start having fatigue, nausea and vomiting occurring. So what is the pathophysiology? Quite simple, nothing complicated. Uh, first of all, we have to have this foreign body. The bacteria has to gain access to the bladder. And once it gets to the bladder, the first thing it does, it attaches itself to the epithelium of the bladder, and then it colonizes that space. Now the colonization leads to now a reaction that uh, happens. So you'll have a defense mechanism like an immunological reaction occurring, and then you start having inflammation. The inflammation will lead to destruction, okay, of uh, the epithelium of the bladder. Okay, you'll also start having edema, okay, because there's inflammation. You can have uh, some uh, tiny hemorrhages, which leads to hematuria, okay? So it's quite a straightforward thing. So most UTIs 
uh, will normally occur because of fecal organisms that now ascend from the perineum to the urethra and the bladder. And then they go to the surface, okay? That is one of the ways that we might have the, the, the microorganism going there. So the routes by which the bacteria enter the urinary tract can be basically three. Okay, these are a bit different from pyelonephritis, which we basically talked about two main ways. It can be up through the urethra, which is an ascending infection. It can be through the blood stream, which is a descending infection or hematogenous spread. So like the blood supply that actually supplies also the, um, the bladder, okay? Uh, or it can even be the blood that supplied the, the kidneys, but now still uh, bacteria ended up there and then it came uh, to the bladder, then by means of fistula, okay, which is direct uh, extension. And I think I talked about fistula. So for example, when you have a, like uh, one of, for example, you have a recto, a recto vaginal uh, fistula, uh, not a recto, a vesico, vesico vaginal fistula, where you have um, the bladder is in uh, direct contact with the, with the vaginal canal, okay? Because of whatever reason that now the epithelium of the vagina uh, gets destroyed and then now it is in continuation. So you find that maybe whatever microorganisms or the, even the, the normal commensals that are in the vagina, they gain access to the bladder, okay? So that can just be a direct extension. Rectal vaginal is a, is, it's, uh, um, a bit different because this is between the rectum and the vagina, so it doesn't affect the bladder. Okay, so the lab test that can be done for diagnostics, uh, most common, they'll do just a, they'll take a urine sample, okay? Uh, and the urine samples that we take is the midstream specimen, okay? And uh, so it has to be midstream. That, uh, that means you don't like, you're given, you're given like um, a container to collect your urine. You don't now just insert the first urine that you, you urinate. First of all, you, you just urinate, you drain it, and then now you put, you insert your, your jar there to collect, then remove it. Okay, that is what we call a midstream uh, specimen, okay? Uh, you can look at your manuals, uh, your nursing council manuals for collection of uh, urine samples, okay? It's important. You can look at how, how we do that. But now it has to be midstream. Uh, then, so that's, that, that uh, urine that is collected, uh, they can do a microscopy on it to look at white blood cells, red blood cells, or even pass culture and sensitivity to examine which exact bacteria it is. Uh, also, they can, uh, you can, they can look at the amount of colonies of bacteria uh, to determine the level of bacteria, bacteria urine. Uh, urinalysis is a very good um, thing that is done. And I think uh, we all know what specific things that you can, be, can, can do. We have what we call the deep stick, okay? And I think I explained this when you we were talking about diagnosis. This is what we call a, a, a deep stick. I, I told you I'll show you. So this is a deep stick. And what happens is basically uh, this, this stick is uh, inserted into, it's just dipped into that jar that has urine. And it has several elements, okay? Now, it can show the specific gravity based on the color that will be seen. It can show leukocytes, it can show um, ketone bodies, bilirubin, bilirubin uh, protein, glucose, okay? So it has so many things that you can show. And what you normally do is just compare the colors, okay, that are shown there. So for example, if the deep stick that you inserted in the urine uh, produced the color that is here, then that will basically mean that the amount of uh, glucose that you have in that urine is 300 milligrams per deciliter, or basically what we call 17 millimoles per liter, which is uh, an indication of some trouble in terms of uh, the amount of glucose you have in urine. Okay, so that is basically what they do in urinalysis. So they check the protein, nitrites, glucose levels, and uh, I don't want to talk about, we know also urinals can be used for pregnancy tests, but with regards to this issue of cystitis, then Dipsy can show you all these other elements. Uh, uh, proteins in, in, in urine, uh, glucose in urine, uh, bilirubin levels, nitrate levels, specific gravity. So what do you want to do when you want to do management? So what is your aim? 
your aim is one to relieve the pain that that is there okay or relieve the symptoms and then you don't want it to ascend even further because we are having a cystitis we don't want it to go and become a paello nephritis this is complicating things even further so one we want to relieve the symptoms but we want to also prevent ascending infection and finally we want to eradicate, remove the entire batch of bacteria that is causing the problem in the bladder. So these are the three things that we that are in our in our in our in our heads as we are trying to manage. So first of all, in management, we want to, to get rid of the bacteria. So antibiotic treatment normally for 10 to 14 days, depending on which uh, one you're using, uh, nitrofurantoin can be used for around seven to 10 days. You can use penicillins, some uh, quinolones like uh, ciprofloxacin, uh, analidixic acid, or even uh, cephalosporins, okay? So antibiotics are used, analgesics and antipyretics. Uh, paracetamol will be good for that, okay? Uh, on top of that, we expect you to do a couple of things. Monitor temperature because of the fever, okay? Uh, encourage fluid intake. Okay, again, water does what? Water helps in flushing. So this flushing is important. Uh, then encourage the client to empty the bladder as often as possible or whenever the urge is there. Okay, so that, that uh, emptying is also a, a way of flushing the bladder. Then educate on strict perennial hygiene. That means on how like they wipe themselves when they've gone for a long call and how clean it should be, uh, especially for women, okay? Yeah. Um, before I move even to complication, there's, there's also one way of managing uh, cystitis, which is very chronic. Uh, and this is one I've, I've actually seen in that. So we have catheters. Normally catheters, the normal, most common catheters that we have are the two ways catheter. Okay, two way meaning that you have a section for, uh, either inflating the, ba the, the the balloon or you can insert water, whichever way that you use. And then the other, um, you, you have another now, another canal, okay? Uh, then, so what, what, what is important uh, is a, a three-way balloon can be used, which has a three, uh, three ways in short. And what it does is that it is inserted. So if this is the bladder, okay, the urethra. So the three-way balloon, not balloon, the three-way catheter is used. Uh, and one of, one of these ways are used to actually pump in some medication, okay? So some, some, I've seen even some, so some some of the management being the, the pump in even iodine or it, they can even pump in some uh, antibiotic okay and then now it will be drained after some time okay so what they they normally call bladder irrigation okay they can just do a bladder irrigation okay so and what it does is just uh, comes and washes whatever is there and then it's removed and also they can, uh, the, the antibiotic or the antimicrobial agent that is there can also help in fighting the microorganisms that are there. Okay, so that is one of the management I've not talked about here, but it is one of uh, the common ones you would see, especially when they're handling uh, some severe form of cystitis. So complications we might have uh, is uh, we can have ascending infection and then we go and have pyelonephritis. I think that is quite straightforward. And that is, those are the things that we are trying to avoid. So if it, 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 it um, continues going upwards, we might have pyelonephritis. But also we might have chronic cystitis. Again, when we keep having reoccurrence of uh, the infection of the bladder, which again might become a problem. 